and welcome everyone. I'm Dia, the head of product at Johnson Labs. In today's session, we'll explore new ways to leverage large language models in healthcare with the no-code generative AI platform. The purpose of the generative AI is to simplify interactions with AI tools and make them accessible to healthcare professionals. Our focus is on empowering healthcare workers, from clinicians to researchers, with the ability to build task-specific AI models. These can be used to analyze vast data sets to help identify patterns and even assist in diagnosis and patient care, all without the need for deep coding technology. This can lead to opening new doors in personalized medicine, speeding up research and enhancing patient outcomes. So let's see how this technology is being applied in real world and how you can leverage it into your own work to drive innovation and improve health outcomes. Thank you for watching this and let's get started. Today's presentation is structured around three points, each designed to highlight how generative AI, specifically LLMs, can improve the way we approach text processing in healthcare. First, we'll see how LLMs can be used to build training data for smaller and more efficient models tailored to specific types of documents and taxonomies. Second, given the sensitive nature of healthcare data, I'll show how zero-shot models shipped as part of the generative AI platform can be used to replace API calls to external LLM services. Finally, we'll discuss how to streamline these AI capabilities within your organization through the private enterprise hub. This will cover organizing and sharing task-specific models, prompts, and governance rules to foster collaboration while also ensuring security and compliance. By the end of today's session, you'll have a clear understanding of how these elements work together to build powerful analysis tools in healthcare. Let's start with the first point, that of using LLMs such as GPT-4 to analyze and extract insights from your medical documents. As illustrated in this infographic, Generative AI Lab facilitates seamless integration with the OpenAI API empowering domain experts to easily define prompts for classification or for entity extraction. This integration allows Generative AI Lab to process the LLM's response, adjust the indexes of the extracted segments, and overlay pre-annotation results directly onto the original documents. In the second phase, domain experts have the opportunity to review these pre-annotation results through a user-friendly interface and to offer their expertise in the form of adjustments or corrections. This refined data can then be employed to develop smaller, more specialized models that are optimized for processing the documents of interest. Generative AI Lab also offers support for training experiments and enables users to review benchmarking data generated during the training model. And uh, if the need arises, uh, users can enhance the training data sets with additional document examples and proceed to retrain the model or to tune the model, ensuring continuous improvement and refinement. Now, the initial step of the workflow involves crafting prompts that effectively guide LLMs to extract specific entities and do targeted classification, both crucial tasks for um, organizing um, and analyzing the vast amounts of unstructured data in healthcare. By using platforms such as ChatGPT, we can leverage powerful pre-trained models as a starting point for those tasks. After generating the initial results, the next step is correction. This involves an intuitive uh, user interface that allows for quick review and amendment of the LLM's output. Importantly, this step facilitates easy collaboration among teams uh, and uh, among domain experts, uh, distributing tasks to ensure um, speed of the corrections, accuracy, and relevance in the context of healthcare. With the corrected data, we move on to training and fine tuning the model. This step is made accessible through the NoCo Generative AI platform, which levels the playing field in AI development by removing the barrier of complex programming. Support for experiments during this phase allows for the exploration of different configurations and parameters to optimize performance. The final step is iterative refinement. Here, uh, we assess the model's performance uh, and add more data if needed. 
This process ensures that the model can be adapted and improved as a response to new information, new type of documents, or evolving requirements in the healthcare domain. Now let's dive deeper into each of these steps and see how they come together in practice as part of the first use case, adverse drug events detection. Adverse drug events pose significant challenges, uh, often going um, underreported in traditional healthcare surveillance. This is why lately researchers have turned to social media and health forums, which with patient feedback as a, a novel data source for real-time ADE insights. Harnessing the power of natural language processing, one can automatically detect and analyze these ADEs from vast amounts of unstructured patient feedback, feedback um, often available on social media. Importantly, this patient feedback can be openly processed using LLMs as it does not contain sensitive data or PHI. This data extends at the drug surveillance scope and enables healthcare professionals to better understand medication risks and adjust the prescribing practices they have accordingly. Additionally, analyzing this data across demographics with NLP and LLMs can reveal crucial insights and make patient care safer and more personalized. The Generative AI Lab offers integration with GPT-4, which allows you to define classification and entity recognition prompts in a similar way you interact with ChatGPT. Let's start with a classification prompt that will determine if a given text contains adverse events related to a drug. <clears throat> for this, you need to define a name for the prompt and pick a GPT API key from the available drug prompt. Finally, describe in natural language when a text should be classified as containing adverse drug events and when not. Finally, list the classes that you want to target, in this case present or absent. Now you can start testing the prompt on concrete examples from social media and see the outcomes predicted by GPT-4 together with the confidence score. You can update the prompt definition if needed and finally save the prompt for reuse. Let's continue with the definition of an entity extraction prompt. Specify the name of the entity you want to extract, medication. Select the GPT-4 integration and explain in simple English what entities you are interested in. In this case, we want to identify drug names and ignore the generic mentions of medication. Now test the prompt on different text inputs and check the outcomes LLM generates. If needed, you can update the prompt until it generates the expected results. Once the prompts are ready, uh, you can add them to project configuration for applying them on a larger set of documents. For this, let's create a new project, give it a name, ADE for instance, skip the, tip, the, the team definition step for the moment, and start from a name entity recognition template. Next, I will choose to work with entire tasks as they are usually short. From the reuse resources tab, you can pick the two prompts we just created and if necessary, eliminate the taxonomy elements added by the NER tab. For that, you navigate to the code view of the project configuration and just simply remove the entities you are not interested in. At the end, we save the configuration and we can import the social media documents um, that we want to analyze with the two prompts we just created. Once the data is imported, you can uh, choose to visualize it on one page and then uh, click the pre-annotate button um, to pre-annotate all tasks of the project. While pre-annotation is running, let's assign tasks to an annotator and then change the role of the current user from manager to annotator for a focused view of the tasks at hand. Now, once all pre-annotations are available, your team can provide feedback in the form of corrections to help improve the quality of the results and the quality of the examples that we will, will use for training a new model. For this, we select the task, navigate to the uh, task view, 
and um, review the results generated by the prompt. You can either accept the predictions or edit them if errors are present. So the, as you see, the provided UI is very simple to use and intuitive for the main experts. And um, uh, the load can easily be divided across the members for speeding up the corrections. Uh, for shorter tasks, a dedica dedicated task view is available to see the content of the tasks and uh, also grasp the results of the classification. Right, so we, here you can see that uh, um, classification in place is available together with um, the snapshot of the task content. So once you have enough examples, um, corrected examples, you can move to the next step, that of training a new model. For this, navigate to the train page where you'll see options to train a classifier and an NER model. Those options are generated based on the current project configuration. You can update the training parameters, but the default values are usually quite efficient. Finally, save the configuration and press the train button. Now, while training is running, logs are available, and when the training is done, the model will appear on your private enterprise hub under the models page. Here you can check benchmarking data for the model, rename it, download it, export it to S3, or finally remove it when no longer need. But why take this analysis approach instead of simply using LLMs to process all ADE data? Well, first of all, task-specific models are tailored to specific needs and context, resulting in higher accuracy compared to general LLMs. This precision is vital in healthcare where every detail matters. Furthermore, the models yield deterministic results so you are sure that when applying them on the same text, you will get the same results. By developing a task-specific model, you retain ownership of the intellectual property. This not only secures your innovation, but also provides the freedom to customize and evolve your model when needed. The Spark NLP models are designed to be applied at scale across all available data, ensuring performance and scalability. Also, task-specific models offer easy integration through APIs facilitating seamless incorporation into existing systems and workflows. They are optimized to work efficiently on CPU machines, making them accessible without the need for high-end GPU infrastructure. That being said, we all know that in healthcare, PHI protection is crucial. This is why the Generative AI Lab offers support for zero-shot models that can process PHI directly on your infrastructure, ensuring privacy and compliance. Following the same workflow as uh, for the integration of LLMs via external APIs, you can leverage pre-annotations of your documents with zero-shot learning. In other words, by replacing API calls to LLMs with zero-shot pre-annotation available out of the box within the Generative AI Lab. This ensures compliance and meets the strict healthcare regulation offering peace of mind. As such, you can pre-annotate any healthcare data even when it contains PHI. One example in this direction is the analysis of cardiology reports. But of course, uh, the method can be applied on any other types of notes, healthcare notes, clinical notes, and so on. But in advancing cardiology care, we can leverage AI not just as a tool, but as a collaborative uh, platform to build um, specific NER models. Zero-shot models can be used as a first step in predicting key medical entities within cardiology notes, uh, spanning patient history, diagnosis, treatment plans, or medication, or whatever we are interested in. It, this allows you to quickly surface critical information, such as patient-specific medication interactions or diagnostic history from your huge amount of data, uh, and all of that without uh, specific training on your data set. In this second video, let's create and use zero-shot prompts for name entity recognition. First, we need to specify the name of the target entity, in this case, disease, and then choose a domain for the zero-shot uh, model. For this example, we can go with the zero-shot open source model. Um, we can also attach a description to the prompt to facilitate its reuse. Finally, we need to provide a list of questions written in natural language. 
the questions should explain what the target entity is. In the case of disease, my initial set of questions include what is the disease, what is the name of the patient's disease, uh, and what is the name of the disorder. Those can be edited later on while testing the prompt on concrete examples. After the prompt is saved, you can deploy it to playground, playground for testing. Here, I can check the outputs of the prompt on specific text examples and try to improve it by adding new question uh, definitions uh, as well as other questions that define what the entity is not. The other questions will help eliminate the false positive results generated by the zero-shot model. For instance, what is the symptom? Um, this question will help eliminate um, the symptoms from, from um, my list of uh, predicted entities. Or for instance, what is the disease characterized uh, by? This will help uh, eliminate all the pre-annotations uh, which will um, target characteristics of the disease. Right? So you can save the prompt, test it further until the results are good enough to start with. So once you are done, uh, you can proceed with the creation of a new project that will use this prompt together with the others, um, NER zero shot prompts to extract entities from cardiology nodes. I start with the same name entity recognition template, choose to work on the entire documents, then eliminate the entities from the default template as I don't need them, and then select the zero shot prompts I prepared. After saving the configuration, I will import the task from a JSON file. Next step, after import, um, is to run pre-annotations. After pre-annotations are available, the domain experts can step in and start verifying the pre-annotations and provide corrections. The process is the same as in the previous example. Um, the domain experts go through the task content, uh, correct the errors if, uh, if they are present, and provide uh, improved annotations. Uh, once enough corrected data, corrected tasks are available, you can proceed to training a new model, testing it, and when it reaches a target accuracy level, deploy it to process your entire corpus of documents. Furthermore, once I train an NER model, I can use it in combination with other healthcare resources, such as assertion status models, entity resolution models, relation extraction models, and so on. Together, they can process available patient data, identify and link entities across uh, tasks, across um, sentences and paragraphs, and construct a holistic view of each patient journey. In terms of advantages that the Generative AI Lab brings to the table, first of all, I can mention that it is a 100% no-code platform built specific, specifically for domain experts, such as medical doctors or healthcare researchers. It supports easy collaboration across teams of experts to quickly incorporate their feedback. Um, it is highly customizable in terms of workflows. Uh, user interface and um, also offers full API access to all features available via UI. It offers out-of-the-box support for more than name entity and classification tasks. It also allows handling of assertion statuses, relationships, mapping to standard ter terminology such as ICD-10, SNOMED, RxNorm, and so on. Furthermore, it offers enterprise-grade security with role-based access, encryption, audit trails, on-premise deployment uh, for the situation when uh, PHI analysis is needed. Finally, it can be used for document for visual document understanding, and as such, it is capable of analyzing besides text, text content, visual PDFs, and images. Now let's take a closer look at the Models Hub feature of our Generative AI Lab. The Models Hub acts as a centralized platform where users from your organization can easily manage their AI development lifecycle. It supports operations like the secure sharing, searching, filtering, testing, publishing, importing, and exporting of AI models, prompts, and rules. 
This functionality simplifies the management of proprietary AI assets, enabling teams to efficiently collaborate and leverage these assets into their projects. The Models Hub implements role-based access control, allowing you to define who in your organization has access to your assets, who can experiment with prompts and rules, and who can export your models. Versioning and backup features are available to keep a record of changes made to your assets, ensuring that you can always revert to previous versions if needed. Finally, the Playground allows for easy editing and testing of prompts, rules, or models without coding. Generative AI Lab is integrated with the NLP Model Sub, and this gives you access to an extensive library of over 40,000 models and pipelines ready to be integrated into your project. This integration not only enhances your capabilities, but also provides easy access to model benchmarking data, to model documentation, and one-click downloads. Within the models page, you'll find a private repository tailored for your organization needs, included models that you have trained, or uploaded, or downloaded from the NLP model site. The centralized management system ensures that your AI assets are organized and available. Uh, the rules page offers a dedicated space for creating and managing the rules um, you want to use to define and use in your project. With an intuitive editing interface and practical examples at hand, crafting custom rules becomes a straightforward process. Lastly, the prompts page allows you to curate a collection of prompts defined either with GPT integration or zero-shot prompts which are essential for pre-annotating your, do your documents and for training your AI models. In terms of deployment options for the Generative AI Lab, the tool is available both on AWS Marketplace and uh, for on-premise installation. When you choose the AWS Marketplace, you get a one-click deployment within your security parameter and you also gain immediate access to visual document understanding feature, including tools for OCR, PDF pre-annotation, or visual model training. For healthcare professionals, our platform offers specialized research resources, such as embeddings and uh, models designed and tuned for healthcare data, uh, covering tasks such as entity recognition, assertion status detection, um, classification, um, entity resolution, and so on. And you are never alone in this process. Professional support is always at your fingertips to assist you with any questions or integration issues. Alternatively, for those who prefer local deployment, Generative AI Lab can be set up uh, right within your own infrastructure with a one line. For on-premise deployments, Generative AI Lab tool is free. In cases where you require access to healthcare and visual features, a pay as you go license fee can be included that will ensure you only pay for the features uh, you need on an hourly basis. Deployment via Azure Marketplace is also coming soon. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, ideas, or just want to chat more about the Generative AI Lab and how it can fit into your workflows and into your project, send me an email or reach out via LinkedIn. Thanks again for your time and interest. I wish you an inspiring and insightful rest of the day at the end of the summit.